Hello! In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. The limit as n approaches infinity of the square root of n plus the square root of n minus the square root of n is equal to 1 half. Now, if you recall from the definition of the limit of a sequence, this means the following. It means for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a positive integer k, such that for all positive integers n greater than or equal to k, the absolute value of the difference between this and one half is less than epsilon. Okay, so to prove this, all we have to do is prove that this statement is true. And since we're trying to prove a statement about every epsilon greater than zero, let's give ourselves an arbitrary epsilon greater than zero. From here, we want to find a positive integer k such that this is true. So really, we want to choose a positive integer k such that no matter what positive integer n we take to be greater than or equal to k, this inequality will turn out true. And to see what we should choose k to be, let's play around with the left-hand side of this inequality. First, I'm actually going to re-express this guy minus this guy in a different way. I'm going to take this guy and multiply it by the conjugate divided by its conjugate. And if we do that, well, multiplying these two together, the denominator will be precisely this. And in the numerator, we're really multiplying this guy times its conjugate. And that will leave us with n plus square root of n minus n. And that simplifies down to square root of n. So this is what we get. Now, let's combine these two guys into a single fraction. To do that, let's first multiply both the numerator and denominator of this fraction by 2. So we get this. And then let's take 1 half and multiply both the numerator and denominator by this guy. So now we have the same denominator, so we can combine these two guys into a single fraction. And notice we're going to be doing 2 square root of n minus square root of n. That leaves us with square root of n minus square root of n plus square root of n. Now at this point, we're going to remove the absolute values. Notice the numerator is negative. The denominator is positive. So to remove the absolute values, all we got to do is swap these two terms in the numerator. So just like that. But now that we've done that, the numerator is positive and the denominator is positive. And we can make this quantity bigger by making the denominator smaller. For example, if we remove the first term in the denominator, that will make this quantity bigger. In addition, if we remove the 2, that will make the denominator smaller. And again, that's going to make this quantity bigger. And now, let's take this fraction and multiply both the numerator and denominator by the conjugate of the numerator. If we do that, then in the numerator, we're really multiplying this guy by its conjugate. So that's going to equal n plus square root of n minus n, which simplifies down to square root of n. In the denominator, we're really just doing square root of n times this expression. Distributing square root of n across, we're going to get square root of n times this guy plus square root of n times square root of n, which that's just n. So just like that. And then again, if we make the denominator smaller, that will just make this overall quantity bigger. So, for example, if we remove the first term, that will make this quantity bigger. So we're left with square root of n over n, and that's just equal to 1 over the square root of n. This looks pretty simple to work with. Now, we can try to figure out what to choose k to be. Turns out it's going to be nice if we choose k 
so that 1 over k is less than epsilon squared. Right? It makes sense that we should expect some positive integer k to satisfy this inequality. Formally, the idea that we used here is called the Archimedean property. But now that we've done that, we know that since these guys are both positive, the square root of this must be less than the square root of this. Well, the square root of 1 over k is actually 1 over the square root of k. The square root of epsilon squared is just epsilon. So we've chosen a value for k. Now we want to show that this statement must be true. Well, since we're trying to prove a statement about all positive integers greater than or equal to k, let's give ourselves an arbitrary positive integer greater than or equal to k. We'll call it n. From here, the whole goal is to prove that this inequality is true. And we've already done some of that work. Turns out, since n is greater than or equal to k, the reciprocal of n must be less than or equal to the reciprocal of k. But then, since these guys are both positive, it follows that the square root of 1 over n must be less than or equal to the square root of 1 over k. And really, the square root of 1 over n is 1 over the square root of n. The square root of 1 over k is 1 over the square root of k. And now, continuing to where we left off, we know that this guy is less than or equal to 1 over the square root of k, and 1 over the square root of k is less than epsilon. And so, what this shows is that this guy is less than epsilon, and that is exactly what we wanted to show. And so, we have proven this statement. Because we've proven this statement, well, this is precisely what it means for the limit of this sequence to be equal to 1 half. So we have proven that the limit of the sequence is equal to 1 half. And so this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.